Father, for the promise for us all. He said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all men, children, and their children. That means the Holy Spirit comes with the strength of God. But we see people get killed for no reason. We see wars in places because there is no God. We see marriages get broken because nobody want to pray. Everybody just want to give up in a time. Nobody want to declare the word of God in their life. Jesus made a powerful statement in Matthew 22, verse 29. He said something very powerful. He said to the people, he said to the man, he said, here's the major problem in the life of a child of God. This is what Jesus said. Listen, he said, Jesus replied, your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. That's where we make our mistakes. All right. Just willing to throw in the towel every time something get hard. Nobody want to fight. Nobody want to stand up. Nobody want to speak over their children. Just want to call them bad. Say they have attitudes. But what about declaring the word of God over your child? My wife spent too much money. What about declaring the word and covering your wife? Amen. Let no man tear down what God has put together. That's what the word say. But every time you call one of your homeboys, he tear down your spouse. Mm. Or she call her homegirl and she tear down her husband. That's because you call it on the wrong person. So today we finna learn how to declare God's strength into your life. Amen. Not the woman on the left of you or the man on the right of you, but the Holy Father, the creator of us all. Amen. Before, you know, if you was here last time, you know I like to set my up with scripture. This is the word of God that I preach. This is not of my own interpretation. And I'm not here for a show. I'm here for an assignment. So the first, my first set of scriptures is from Job 22, 28, and I'm reading in New Living Translation. I like it in both, but I, I brought this because to the ear it sounds a little better if you don't really know the Bible. Yeah. New Living Translation say in Job 22, 28, it say, you will succeed in whatever you choose to do, and light will shine on the road ahead of you. In the King James Version, it say, you will, whatever God declare, when you declare something, when God declares something, you might as well take it to the bank of cash. It's going to come true. So you will succeed. But what is the thing that you need to succeed? Some of y'all need to learn to get on your knees at night. Find out. Isaiah 55, 11. It is the same way. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it always produce fruit. It would accomplish all I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. God's word do not go out and come back without no results. It is not, it is not a voided word. Whatever God speak, you might as well look at it because it will come into reality. Proverbs 18, 21, one of my favorites. The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. I also love Matthew 12, 36, 37. It says, by your words you will be condemned, and by your words you will be acquitted. Watch what you say. Watch what you speak. Your words can cause death in your life. Declaring God's word is building up one another, encouraging one another, loving one another. God said, I created all things. If it was good, when did he ever call us bad? Yes, amen. It wasn't until the death entered. Things got bad. But when we had God, it was all good. Do you see the change? If not, you will by, to, by the end of this. Jeremiah chapter 1, 12. And the Lord said, that's right. And it means that I am watching. And I will certainly carry out all my plans. God don't send a word out without watching over it to make sure it performs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whatever God say, it's going to perform. Yes, sir. So you better watch what you asking for. Because you could be asking for something that ain't even meant for you. 
Amen. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. That's what he was sent to us for. And then we're going to go ahead and go into the foundation of where this message is all coming from. I want to show you a man in the Bible who had to declare strength through the Lord. Strengthen himself. But when you strengthen yourself, it ain't that you're strengthening yourself through yourself. You're strengthening yourself through the one who's greater than you. We're going to get to that. That's, that's later on. Everybody, turn your Bible over to 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 through 4. We're going to go through scripture here. We're going to pray and we're going to get deep, knee deep in the word. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, guide us. Thank you, Lord. Before I read this, first and foremost, again, all praises and honor to the Most High God, Amen. to our First Lady, and our pastor, Pastor Diggles. Man, if y'all don't understand how they are building up disciples here, Amen. you know, it don't, you don't need a million dollars to build disciples. Amen. You just need someone with a vision and the Spirit of God. Thank y'all for everything that y'all doing and believing in me. For I was a wretched man. But the Bible says, who will save me from this body of death? Thank you to our Lord Jesus Christ. Like my wife said to Pastor Ted and his wife, man, we, Pastor Ted was in here praying so hard Friday night by himself. I came and laid up here and the spirit just was moving. It was just me, my wife, and Pastor Ted. We had the whole spirit in here by ourselves. Hallelujah. One was, in the, one was in the back, one was right here in the front, and I was up here. And the spirit was just going like this. Man, powerful stuff. Thank you for doing that, Pastor Ted. And Brother Mike, you're amazing, brother. I love you to death. Thank you. And to Jaden and Sierra, like y'all say, y'all are amazing kids. Thank y'all for every Sunday bringing us good music. Amen. God bless you, Christine, for that beautiful worship. All right, let's read the word of God. Let the meditation of my, let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Three days later, this First Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. Three days later, when David and his men arrived home at their town of Ziklag, okay. they found that the Amalekites had made a rave into the Negev in Ziklag. They had crushed Ziglad and burned it to the ground. They had carried off the women and children and everyone else, but without killing anyone. And that is the word of, another word for that, they kidnapped them. They took them. Verse 3, when David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they couldn't weep no more. Ooh, how many of y'all been at that point in your life? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where you just feel like all hope is gone. Yeah, sir, yeah, you sir. done cried everything you had in you out. Yes, wow. Sir. Well, watch this. They wept until they couldn't weep no more. David's two wives, Amenahem from Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Camel, were among those captured. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters and they began to talk a stone in him. Yeah. But, but, I love that, but. David found strength yeah. in the Lord his God. Yeah. Let us pray and then we're going to get in the word. Our most gracious heavenly father, thank you. First for your mercy and your grace because it, we know it was you who woke us up this morning. We know it was you who provided the roof over our heads, transportation to get here. Thank you for traveling, Gates. For everybody who had to travel this morning to get here, you made it here safely because the Lord chose you to. We worship you from our hearts with a clean heart. And God, we ask you every day for your spirit to help renew our minds so we can be more like you and less like the world. Father, let us be able to see that David was a mighty warrior. David was strong. David had already defeated a bear and a lion. But this dude lost his daughters and sons and, and his two wives. And they weep. All the men around him weep, God. But David is the one turned to you and found strength in you. See, it's not about what we do. It's about what we do in the times that we need you the most. Do we turn to human or do we turn to you, God? 
And David chose to turn to you because he knew that the battle had just begun. That the war was not over. Even though they just had a taste of victory, now they're in a whole different another war. And that's how life is. Life is a fight. Are you willing to stand your ground by trusting in the Lord for his strength and his might? God, please let the meditation of our heart and the words of our mouth be acceptable in your sight. And Father, anything we have done knowingly and unknowingly to grieve the Holy Spirit, we ask for forgiveness in your son, Jesus' name. Thank you so much for everything you have done for each individual on the sound of my voice that's here and online today. May God bless the souls of the ones that really has an ear to listen to the word of God. May you pour out your blessing upon the hearts of those who deserve it. Thank you, Lord, for your undeserved kindness because we don't deserve it no way. But it's because you care for us and you love us that you give it to us abundantly, Lord. So let today be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us understand that we're coming with the power of the Holy Spirit. And let them, whoever has an ear, let them hear the word of God the way it should be heard in the Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let me get my throat wet before I get, you know. Thank you, God. Because it's fit to go down. <laughs> yes, Lord. I want to go ahead and before I even get into this, if Joe could, can you bring up the first topic for today? The first topic. You should see it on the screen here. Topic number one. There we go. Life is a fight, but you are a child of God. Right now, like I say, it's a people that's going through a lot right now. I can't even fathom what the families are feeling in that little town that has lost their babies. But see, I try not to focus too much on the world. The world will eat you up and spit you out. So when I hear bad news, I go straight to the source. Because I know God and what God can do. And the thing is, I understand something. We all have an expiration date. Everybody will meet that day. So why would I sit up and get all the way downcast when I believe that God promises a yes and amen? Because I know the word. So what I'm going to do is pray for those that have to endure that pain. Right. Because I know now they, finna, they just started to fight. Right. Yeah, yeah. But life is a fight. Right. But you are a child of God. And I want you to tell you, I want to tell you something about that. The situation is relatable to everyone sitting in this church today. Life is a fight. Everyone of us is in the middle of a fight right now financially marriage children buying a house trying to pay rent trying to buy groceries yeah. everything is getting harder trying to get gas to travel everything is getting harder yeah. we're fighting just to survive yeah. All right. All right. the government don't care for us let's be honest but we know who do Everybody is fighting to pay bills, fighting to finish school, fighting to keep your marriage away from divorce, fighting to go to work because you just don't have the energy no more. No, sir. Feel like you're not even making ends meet because everything's so high and the companies don't want to raise your pay. No, That's a fight within itself. Yeah. How am I going to feed my children? Yeah. But I know a guy fed people in the wilderness with manna. You better know how to declare God's strength in your life. I sometimes sit back and I think how my mother did it. Four kids. One woman. Three boys. We all lift weights. Strong. And mama go straight upside your head. And I love her for it. And don't bother and weed, she's going to become harder. <laughs> but what I know about life is that life doesn't fight fair. Yeah. Right. Right. When you are in the middle of fighting, one problem 
Here come another problem. My car done broke down. Now I can't get to work. Now I have a supervisor on my back trying to write me up, but not understanding that I'm in a real life situation. Where is the compassion for me? Why don't you just fix my car then if you want me to be here so bad? You know why? Because life don't fight fair. Right, right. They rather you catch the bus. When you are in the middle of fighting one problem, like I say, boom, here comes another one and another one. You may start the week off sick. Then your car break down again. Then you, the doctor telling you the sickness is a, a, a cancer or something that can basically kill you. Now that's on your mind. Your children on your mind. Now you don't even have life insurance. Now how are you gonna bear, how they gonna bury you? How your kids gonna survive if you don't leave them anything to survive on? Work with, work with. So now you're fighting that demon. Yeah. War after war just in your mind and in your heart. What are you going to do now? Who are you going to turn to now? Now the whole family got to come together just for resources. Because you were selfish. Because you didn't want to fight for yourself. You can't always depend on men to be there. People are not going to support you just because you support them. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. People don't always love you how you love them, and that's okay because your love should be unconditional anyway. If you're loving me with condition, stop your love for me. Amen. Love me with genuine, love me with the generosity of the heart. Love me without any type of expectation. N leave room in your love for me to make a mistake. Amen. Amen. There you go. But look, look at David right now. David, life is right now at this point is in a fight. What David could have laid down, they weep, they cry. It's nothing else David can do at this point. His children are gone, his wives are gone. Do you lay down to cry or do you turn to the Lord for strength? Because now it's time to get up and fight. And at this point, David, his own man turned. No. Them partners who tell you they're going to always be there through thick and thin. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, the ones that say, I got your back no matter what. Uh -huh. You know, the ones that say, I'm going to ride and die for you. Yeah. You know, the ones that say, man, I'm going to hold you down. As soon as you go on up that chain gang, they going to. Yeah. As soon as you're in the ground, your mama don't get no calls. Your children don't get no money. But you're loyal to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like David, man. They was all loyal to him. David is the king. Yeah. Remember this. They wanted to the stone their king. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> it. People will change on you at the quick, at the blink of an eye. Yes, they will. They will. They wanted to stone their king. But did that keep David down? No. David still turned to the Lord. <laughs> and he found strength yeah. in the Lord. I want to give you two comparisons in the Bible with David and Moses, both themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Moses said, give me one second here. Hallelujah, God. Moses said in Exodus 15, verse 2 and 3, the Lord is my strength. In my song, he has given me victory. This is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Yes. Yahweh is his name. Yes. Yes. You mean to tell me 3,000 years later, a same man, David said in Psalms 28, 7 and 8, The Lord is my strength and my shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. I burst out in songs of thanksgiving. The Lord gives his people strength. He is a safe fortress for his anointed king. Amen. You find your strength in God. For the Lord is my fortress. Yeah. That means if I say his name, I can find refuge. This don't take a rocket scientist to do this. 
It takes the Holy Spirit and to be touched by God. But you got to be able to walk the walk and talk the talk. And you have to be able to live by the word of God. Because God say, I want to know you by love, but keep my commandments. Amen. Amen. So I, I look at love like this. If your church making a million dollars, why not put the people downtown in hotels for a month? But you went and bought a Bentley. Where is the love? Mental illness is at an all-time high. Men are beating women without self-control. Where is the love? Instead of throwing them in jail, let's throw them into a rehabilitation center for real and help them with their mind through the word of God. Where is the love? That's why I got to find strength in God because I can't trust man. Yeah. Right. The results are showing me that man don't care. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's, real That's right now. So, at this point in my life, I don't lean no man no more. Amen. I love you to, with all my heart, yeah. but you're not finna let me down. That's right. That's right. I trust in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Many of you today have or might at, be at this point in some aspect of your life ready to give up. Yeah. Standing on the edge of failure. Yeah. Oh, my business not going right. Nobody is really supporting me. Look, who cares? Trust in the Lord and keep grinding. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's it. That's it. Because what they don't know about you now, they are going to see it in you later. And then the same ones who won't support you now, they're going to support you later. Because they're going to see how God can take nothing and turn it into something. Because you did not give up. You chose to fight. But at this point, what David do? David encouraged himself. His wife wasn't there. His children wasn't there. His friends wasn't there. No family was there. His man turned on him, his commanded and generous, all changed on him, wanted to stone him. And, but David didn't just give up. David encouraged himself. At this point in your life, you will have to encourage yourself. Your mama can't do it. Your daddy can't do it. Your pastor can't do it. Sometimes you're going to be in a situation where you are all alone. That's why it's important to know scriptures. Because you got to know what scripture to say in the situation that you're in in order for God's power to manifest in I don't think they understand what I'm saying. If I'm standing in front of you and you are an enemy of me, I can go to Isaiah 54, 17 and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen. Because when the going get tough, the child of God gets going. We don't just sit there. And I'm going to tell you, if you're not, I'm not no punk. No, oh, sir. Oh, oh. But I do have the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. So when I come with love, yeah. when I come with joy, yeah. when I come with peace, when I come with self-control, when I come with being mal-tempered, you better thank the Lord for it. Because yeah. oh, warning comes before destruction. Yeah. Real talk. When it looks like all the eyes are stacked against you and your back is against the wall. When it looks like life is just not playing fair and the cards are not dealt in your favor. <laughs> when it looks like there is no way but for you to look up and trust the Lord. I encourage you brothers and sisters. Lean on to God and not your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. Because a man can't lead a man. Unless you lead in a crash dummy. That's why they want you young. That's why they want you young. So your mind don't have time to develop. So your soul don't have a time to meet God. See the devil needs you before God get, a get to touch you. 
That's why it's important for us parents to instill the word of God in our children at an early age. So when the devil comes, your child will know how to tell them to flee and get behind me, Satan. And when you do this, at that moment, that's when your God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, moves into action. His strength is made perfect yes, thank you, Jesus. in your weakness. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> At this point, you are about to give up and you don't have no more. That's when God's strength carries you through. Yes, sir. And I'm going to show you how God's strength carries you through. Come on, Joe, let's go to part two. Remind yourself, child of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, this is my favorite part. I hope y'all ready. Amen. David wasn't eating up by the spirit of pride when he encouraged himself of, on his own ability. He didn't encourage himself on his own ability. He had the understanding in the ground to know where his source of power was coming from. Yeah. And he encouraged himself in that area. What area was that? In the Lord. Yeah, yeah. The scripture said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now the problem with us, we spend our time beating ourselves up about the past mistakes, past bad decisions, past defeats and failures, rather than encouraging ourselves in the Lord that we serve. Amen. Next time you are in a situation, you need to remind yourself in the battle that you are facing who you serve. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Can you put those scriptures up for me, Joe? Thank you, sir. I need everybody to see this. And, and, and on your time, write these down. Come get these scripts. They'll change your life. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Remind yourself who you serve. There we go. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Deuteronomy 3, 22. Do not be afraid of the nations there. For the Lord your God will fight for you. Deuteronomy 28, 13. I am the head and not the tail. Psalms 18, 2. Hallelujah. Look at the devil playing with my phone. He know it's about to get power. He feel me stumping on his neck right now. Deuteronomy 28, 13. I am the head and not the tail. Psalms 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Yeah. Psalms 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots. Some tr trust in horses. Yeah. But we will remember the name of the Lord. Yeah. Romans Psalms 20 verse 7 again some trust in chariots I want to bring that up because people want to trust in their cars for transportation that's it, that's it. but when that car break down who you going to trust in now you done called everybody in your phone book nobody can come give you a ride no chariot for you no horse for you but guess what beat your feet because you trust in the Lord he going to get you there he going to give you the power and the authority to make it to from point A to point B Point B, because God ain't never left you or forsake you. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 8.31, if God is for me, who can be against me? Amen. Romans 8.37, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Amen. Romans 8.37 again, we are more than conquerors through him that love us. And my favorite one of them all, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. Good. Good. Ephesians 6.10, and I carry everybody to go read 10 through 18. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord <laughs> and in the power of the Most High. Do you know what God is saying? He's saying that y'all don't know scripture. I can come into every area in your life and heal you and fix you. Your marriage don't have to go to divorce court. I got you. Your children don't have to be the outcast or the bad kid at school. I can do that. But guess what? When you don't call on him, when you don't know him, when you don't know the power of his name, when you don't even get on your knees and pray, how can you use God when God say you don't know me? James 4, 8 say draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. How can you use a source of power when you don't know how to let, how to plug up the electricity? Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you doing with yourself? Yeah, yeah. All right. 
You can't use God like he's somebody that don't know everything about you. God know in your heart when you just turning to him for a favor, but he know you don't mean it. He know as soon as he bless you, you going to run off and be back with the same people that means you no good. Because I'm going to tell you something. People love playing in the devil's playground. And then when the time get rough, that's when they call on God. Why didn't they call on him when he was blessing you? Rather be in the club. Instead of the church, like I said. Your mother done prayed for you your whole life. And you, you fix your mouth to disrespect her. Your daddy ain't did nothing for you your whole life. But he called, hey, daddy. But the one that raised you, you fix your mouth to disrespect them. Who raised you? But I'm going to tell you something. Our mothers, they don't give up. They keep their strength in the Lord. They keep trusting in the Lord. I watched my mama many times on her knees. Praying. Where you think I got it from? I'm for the trust in the same God she trusted in. And my granny trusted in. And the granny before her trusted in. Because there's something about this God that has kept my family as poor as we are without losing everything. The foundational problem, though, yes. in, in our life, because yeah. like I said, we don't know enough scripture. Yeah. And life can be unpredictable. Yeah. Right. You can't predict what's going to happen tomorrow. That's right. You don't know what's going on. It's unpredictable. Yeah. And this is one of the many reasons why we should have Bible verses yes. memorized in our hearts. Uh -huh. We need to be able to declare and decree at the time that whatever we face with, yeah, we need to speak God into that right there. Amen. Because if you trust in yourself, the worst thing going to happen. And most men, when they put trust in themselves, 911 going to get called. Someone's going to get hurt. Now we got to put our police in danger. Because a fool don't love nothing but foolishness. When adversity comes into play, in those situations, the child of God needs the power of God. That's why we need the word of God in our hearts and in our mind. Speak the word of God in, in situations in your life. The bigger the problem, the more power you can receive from God. Be strong in the Lord. And I'm about to close this out. Joe, let us see topic, the last topic of the day. Topic number three. I want to tell you about who lives in me because greater is he <laughs> who lives in me than he who is in the world <laughs> your body is a house <laughs> of the of the spirit that somebody else reside in <laughs> especially to those who getting baptized today you're going to feel something come into your body and you're going to be like oh god what is this just know it's a sweet sensation just know he called the counselor, the advocate, the wonderful counselor, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. Just know he can guide you into all truth. Amen. Trust in it. The comforter come with that strength. It's not a single occupancy lives here. This is not a single occupancy house. What does that mean? Somebody else lives in here besides me. Yeah, yeah. Who? Please tell us, Minister Ruach. Who is in there? Greater yeah. is he. Yeah. What a wonderful name it is. Yeah. Greater yeah. is he. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. You think he died and left and didn't have a plan for us? 
He said, I'm gonna make, we're going to make an emboldenment in you. God said, I'm going to live in you. You know what? Because he set it up for you to audition for the kingdom, to make it out of here. Everybody will die. If you want me to step down and don't preach the word of God, go find me a man, live forever. Okay, back to the word. Like I said, greater is he. There's only one book that direct you to the source and the power of God. That's only one book tell you about a Messiah. That's only one book tell you about a Savior. That's only one book tell you about reconciliation. Yeah, one, yeah. just one. Just one. Yeah. All these religions, but none of them talk about Jesus. Yes, amen. But the Holy Bible. Yes, Lord. How can we read a book that has been declaring for over 5,000 years events that's going to happen and not believe in the power of it? Amen. Everything you say has come true. Amen. You don't believe it? Go get your history book. You can look up at everybody that was in the time of Jesus and see that they was real. But then you have friends that want to tell you Jesus not real. Oh. Why is this the only man that was in the, all of history? Why he the only one they want to take out? Because that's your power. That's your source. That's your savior. He came in the name of his father. Greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. You can't fight the devil. You are flesh. You can't fight the devil. God say put on the full armor of God because the war is not against flesh or blood but against principalities against wicked spirits the ruler of this other hour yes. who is that? Yes. the devil yes. he over your head playing tricks on your mind yes. that's why you got an attitude for no reason yes. that's why you can control yourself yes. Yes. And the reason why he played on you, because he knew you didn't have scriptures in you. Yeah. Greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. That means no matter what comes against you. And here, the one who's in you is stronger, bigger, and wiser, and greater than anything in your life. Yeah. Knowing this will help you immersely In the mighty name of Jesus yeah. In times when you feel weak Just hug yourself And yell greater Hallelujah. <laughs> It's he that lives in you yeah. the, the times when your wife don't feel Understand you Go off into your closet yeah. And say God you live in me yeah. I'm going to let you deal with her because if I deal with her, we just going to argue, bigger, fuss, and fight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But if you let God deal with her, he going to beat her mind and her heart up and let her know what she wrong and make her feel right. And she going to come back to you with the right attitude, with the right mood swing, with the right persona, with the right position. Because it's something about the man being the head that's connected to God and the woman being the body being connected to the head. Yeah, that's it, that's it. When you're in order, you can't be out of order. Amen. That's right. Sir. Amen. That's good. Good. The greater one is in us. Mm -hmm. And he lives big in me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And I'm going to tell you this before I let you go. Don't worry no more. God don't want you to worry no more. That's the devil's playground. If you made a mistake before today, God say, I'm not the accuser. The Bible say that the devil is the accuser that's accusing you day and night for the stuff you did. God forgives murderers. Drug dealers. Even rapists. As much as I don't like them, yeah. God forgive. Thank God I'm not God. Because right. yeah. a lot of y'all would be in hell right now if I was God. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. He's a just, wonderful, gracious, merciful yeah. Lord. Yeah. 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 Right. It's only one sin that you can commit that you, I'm not even going to pray for you. And that is if you sin against the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If you ain't done that, everything in your life has been forgiven. That's right. Repent. 
Go to the Lord and allow God grace and mercy flow through you. You don't have to be a cheater no more. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't have to be second no more. Yes, sir. That's right. Say that. That's it. That's right. You don't have to be down all the time no more. Amen. You might be broke in the world, but in the spirit, you rich as all our doors. That's right. That's right. You got to know how to spend spiritual dollars <laughs> to manifest <laughs> physical dollars. Because sometimes you, got, you might be up, and sometimes you're going to be down. But in both situations, lean in the Lord. Yes. Yes. Trust in the Lord. Because yes. greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. Right now. We just have to pray right now. But we're going to pray together as a family. Amen. Spiritually in the heart. This is the time you ask God to clean out your heart. And renew your mind. It's not about yesterday. It's about today. You're here for a reason. Take advantage of it. You have loved ones that's dead and gone. They can't pray no more. They can't ask for forgiveness no more. But God got you here because you're still auditioning. You're still in an interview. The most important interview you will ever encounter in your life. Because it's for the kingdom. So right now, let us all bow our heads and close our eyes. Our Father, we ask that you pour out your spirit right now. Let your spirit come and fill us up with the fire of God. Let it burn so deep in us that we will never leave your side again. Father, there are some that are struggling right now in their hearts and in their minds. And they don't even know who really to turn to. Even listening to their message, they still going to struggle to turn to you. Because the world has a stronghold on some. But we bind it in the name of Jesus right now. And we loosen their faith right now in the name of Jesus. Like we said in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Lord, we love you. And we don't even deserve how much you love us. But you continue to love us in ways that we don't even understand. But you did tell us that your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts. For your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So Lord, meet us where we at. Pull us closer to you. And if nobody know how to pray to you, I intercede for them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever power you gave me in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, I give it back to you, oh God. And I ask you to control my life, control my heart, control my walk, control my talk. Let the fruit of the Spirit flow through my body and let the love of Jesus bring me closer to the Father. Through the Holy Spirit, we are, without the Holy Spirit, we truly nothing. The Holy Spirit is the one that bridged the gap. The Holy Spirit is the one that tells God how you truly feel. The Holy Spirit is right now hugging someone that is really feeling the pressure of life and saying, I got you. God is close to the brokenhearted. He sent me here for you. So let us trust in you in all our ways, Lord, and lean not on our own understanding. Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your lessons. And until we come and meet you again, let us say we love you whole heart, whole mind, and whole soul. Hold on tight to us and never let us go. And whatever you do, Father, any mistakes that we make, please don't let your spirit leave us. And don't turn your face away from us, Lord. And forgive us for what we do not understand. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. We can't repay you for the ransom that you pay for us. But right now we can say we love you 
and we're grateful. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let everyone that believes in this prayer say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Come on, you giving him a hand clap. Tell him thank you. You are my strength, Lord. You are my strength. Amen. I praise the Lord. It's something that is critical for us to do in this day and time, and that's for us to declare God's strength. Amen. Declare his strength in our life. And I think that's important for every believer. Amen. For your own personal life, for you to declare uh, God's strength in your life. Amen. David did not declare it for his men, uh, for his haters. He didn't did for the betrayers. None of them. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Look at your neighbor really quick. Say, neighbor, I can't do it for you. <laughs> yeah, you got to do this for yourself. Amen. When you see me doing what I'm doing, hey, you may want to find yourself a relationship and do the same thing. Amen. Find yourself uh, getting really doing what you need to do in the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's interesting how people, some people fight and other people flight. Uh, you know, some of y'all, uh, the question is, are you a fighter? Uh, are you a runner? Are you a track star? That's something to think about because as a child of God, we don't run from nothing. Amen. Amen. Because greater is he. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord for that word today. Amen. We receive it uh, whole heart. Uh, we thank God for that today. Thank God for uh, this encouraging word from this man of God today. Amen. And my prayer for all of you is to know without a shadow of a doubt that we have an awesome father yes. we serve a mighty god hallelujah amen there's only one true living god and we serve him and we're so grateful for him amen you got to learn the word of god and apply those scriptures to your life amen it's interesting how we jump in conversations but we don't bring the word of god in it amen uh-huh folk ask you for your advice why don't you pull out the word and give the word and let that be the advice Amen. Pull out Psalm 1 and say, don't sit in the council of ungodly. Amen. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. I'm not, he preached already, y'all. I'm going to move on to something else. Amen. But it's important for you to recall the word. Uh, everything that come out your mouth should not be contrary and, and not of the word of God. Amen. Yeah, life and death. Mm, come on your mouth. Come out of your mouth. 
Amen. So it's important that we don't get caught up. I don't care how, how high the gas get. I'm going to have enough money to get gas. Amen. Amen. For my God shall supply. All your needs. If I don't need the gas, then I ain't going to get it. I know that's right. That's it. But he shall supply it when I need it. For you to go riding and just hanging out, you may not need it. Amen. <laughs> Some of y'all just going to shoot the breeze. You trying to go get your smokes. You don't need no gas. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> Do you have, I got I got I'm going to run over here or I'm going to wait to go to work tomorrow? Amen. I got a fourth of a tank. Yes, sir. It's got to last me to Friday and the day is only Tuesday. Yeah. He that lacks wisdom. Yeah, yeah. This is the word of God, right? Word, hey, word. Okay, all right. Let me go on. Yeah. Somebody's like, man, why he know, how he know my business like that? Word. <laughs> praise the Lord. No, we praise we praise God for the word. But I mean he will supply. That's the word. And like you said, Philippians 4, 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then 4 and 19 says, my God shall supply all of my needs. And so that's some of us need to get out of the conversations we in and pull the word in there. And then, you know what? You may change the whole atmosphere because you brought the word. Amen. Amen. It can start off negative, but if you bring the word, let's see if the atmosphere changes because Amen. blessings go wherever you go. That's right. That's right. My, my going out is blessed. My in, all of it is blessed. And so no matter where I am, I'm blessed. And so I need to bring that conversation into the atmosphere. Amen. Well, okay. What, I, what am I supposed to be doing right now? Because y'all saying the pastor is 1138. Amen. Bless the Lord. No, all right, so let me, let's get ready for our offering. Then I want to do something right after that. I want to uh, recognize Minister Hednott and, and Sister Raven. Uh, and so we're going to do something special for them here in just a minute. Amen. We want to bless them today. But before we do that, I want to just let you know that we're grateful that all of you came out to worship with us. Amen. So we want to worship the Lord in our giving. And so we want to just say that you can join in with us. We have many platforms. Amen. Those of you that are on YouTube, we have a lot of uh, uh, giving platforms that you're able to give on. Also, if you're here, if you don't have cash or a check or, or you prefer to do uh, virtual as far as do uh, social media and giving and through all the apps and all that kind of stuff, yeah. we have all of them. And so we want you to give today. Be a blessing to us, uh, to this ministry. Really quickly, let me tell y'all, some of y'all may not know this, but we, we believe in being debt free. Amen. And so Amen. this year we're declaring uh, that we're debt free, uh, paying off the building. Amen. amen. And so if you, praise amen, praise the Lord. We, we are declaring that and we, we're believing God for manifestation. Amen. And so every month we are sending what we receive uh, towards the principle of the balance so that we can be debt free in 22 uh, by the end of this year so that in 23 we're debt free. And so if you would like to contribute to that and be a part of that, just put uh, for the building. Amen. We want, we want you to be a part of that. If you can contribute, whatever you choose, whatever the Spirit lay, lead or lay on your heart for you to do, we want you to give uh, to pay off this building. Amen. 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 I believe if you allow yourself to do something for the Lord and do something for the kingdom, I believe you're going to uh, get a return. I really believe that. Amen. Uh, and so ever since we've started this uh, debt-free campaign, the Lord has really multiplied us. He didn't add. He multiplied. Uh, and so I'm so grateful for us being able to send an uh, $8,000 principal payment Amen. last month. Uh, yeah. Amen. That's outside of our regular giving. Amen. That's outside of our regular receiving, our tithes and offering. Outside of our regular budget, we were able to send $8,000 directly to the principal. So thank you. Amen. Thank you to all of you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we just so appreciate all of you. Again, put the giving platforms in there. I want them to see that again. Uh, and so we have Zelle. Uh, we have Tidely. What else we got? Tidely, Zelle, Cash App, Cash App Givelify. Uh, Give so you can pick and choose. Givelify, send reminders every month or every week. However, you, it just depends on how you, how you give. And so, so we want you to be able to do that. Okay. All right, and so we want you to be able to do that. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Well, thank you all again. So we, we're ready. We do a restoration confession uh, once we give, once we uh, do offering, okay? And so you can stay seated because there's quite a few of y'all in here. And so, uh, but look on the screen and we're going to say this in unison. So we want to give you an opportunity for everybody to say this together. Amen. When you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. ready. All right. We got quite a few not ready. So we'll, <laughs> we'll wait for them. Amen. All right, when you're ready, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, we got enough. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Where is that? Who is that? Kingston? All right, that was Kingston. He's ready. Okay, according to the word of God, I intend to prosper and be in good health, even as my soul prospers. I work while it is day. I lend and do not borrow. Therefore, I call myself debt free. I seek financial wisdom using godly principles with the understanding that I am a good steward to all that God has blessed me with. I sow, I reap, I save, and I give. I have the necessary funds to do everything that God has called me to do with abundance running over to bless the Levites and the strangers and the orphans and the widows which are within my gates. I walk in generational wealth leaving an inheritance to my children's children. I call God's house, my house, and all property paid in full. I receive raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and good surprises, bills decreased and paid off. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my needs according to your riches and glory. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give today. Thank you that you give us the ability to get wealth. Father, we thank you for being the source of all of our resources. We honor you today as we give back to you, Father. Thank you for making a way out of no way. Thank you for the doors that you opened that no man can close. Thank you for the business that you gifted me to start. I thank you for the resources. Father, I bless you for my job. I bless you for everything you've granted to me today, and I receive it. Thank you for a return, 30, 60, 100 fold, as I give back to you. We love you. We honor you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you again. We're so grateful for all of you uh, worshiping with us. And so at this time, uh, we're going to ask uh, Minister Hednot if he would come. And so I'm going to do something here. Amen. Again, we appreciate you worshiping with us today. I pray that this message has truly blessed you. I want you to take these points and apply them to your life. I want this week to be productive and effective. May God bless you and keep you.